fix your flat 25 years ago? <laughs> Don't forget me. <laughs> and the poor guy, you just walk right by him, right? <laughs> it's a sin to belittle one's neighbor. Are you one of them belittlers that belittle the neighbors, talk bad about people? And always, are you? It says it right here. Look what it says. It's a sin to belittle one's neighbor. What is that? It's a sin to what? Character assassinate somebody. It's a sin. To gossip and slander. People in the church, that's not a biggie. You know. No, no. Sin is sin across the board. Don't think that God sees it. Oh, that's not as bad as me robbing a bank or stealing from somebody. All I'm doing is tearing somebody down. Because I don't like them. No, it says it's a sin. And that says, blessed are those who help the poor. Mm -hmm. Now, people get the wrong idea about the poor, too. Because it's neither. God doesn't condemn the poor, and he doesn't condemn the rich. But it's neither way. It's, it doesn't, why The person that's poor, we should have mercy and compassion on them. But well, we also have to understand if they did foolish things to make themselves that way too, then they're still continuing to go down that path, us not to enable them, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to leave it to God, because they're poor for a reason. Yeah. It's different when somebody gets cut off from a job and has nothing. You want to help them so they get back on their feet, get back to work, and then you help them out. But you're not going to help somebody that doesn't want to go to work, that's lazy, just mooching off everybody. That, that's, that's, that's no discernment. That's not Jesus. Jesus wasn't a fool. And he doesn't want to raise fools. There's people that enable and enable and enable and enable and get in God's way instead of helping the person that really needs it that wants to get their life back together. Amen. <clears throat> that takes discernment. There's a lot of church and people in church don't have no discernment. To let them come in and fleece the sheep, go back out, come in and fleece the sheep. One thing I have is street smarts. God gave that to me. <laughs> Why do I have street smarts? Because I was on the street. Mm -hmm. So I know exactly what people's game is. Mm -hmm. So if people, people on the street like to come into the church because they think everybody's like dumb. And they can come in and grab stuff off of money, food, mm -hmm. you name it. I'll tell you, if I see it happening, I'm going to call it out right there and there. Because we don't want that happening here. And they'll get so convicted that they'll end up not coming back anyway. <laughs> now look what it says. 22. If you plan to do evil, you will be lost. If you plan to do good, you will receive unfailing love and faithfulness. Wow. That's a great reward, ain't it? Yeah. If you plan to do good. Now listen. Paul said in Romans 7, I want to do the right thing, but I can't. I, don't, I hate what I do, but I do it anyway. There's a different motive. People use that. That scripture taken right out of conscience. See, Paul wasn't perfect, so he kept doing evil. No, he hated the evil that he did. He didn't continue with it because he liked it. If you like evil and you keep doing it, you can't use Romans 7 as an excuse to keep doing it. No, people use that all the time. He leave out the part that, well, Paul hated to do it, but he did it anyway. It was sin living in him that did it. He knew he had a sin nature that got the best of him sometimes, but that wasn't the norm for him. He didn't use it as a justification to keep sinning. What a lie from the pit of hell. People love to twist scripture and take it out of context. People love to, so they can continue in their sin. Saying, I'm forgiven, I'm good. No, it's all, you know what it all comes down to? The motivation of the heart. Mm -hmm. If you want to please God, you won't do it. Amen. If you want to please yourself, you will. Now look what it says. Work brings profit, but mere talk leads to poverty. Uh, there's a lot of talkers out there, right? 
Granted, if I got up in the morning, all I did was talk about getting a job, but actually never went to work. <coughs> yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to do it. Listen, if you really want something, you will do it and you will get it. And there's plenty of it out there. If you really want something, you can get it. Talk is cheap, right? It really is. Wealth is a crown, of a crown for the wise. The, the effort of fools yields only foolishness. A truthful witness saves lives. Look at verse 25. But a false witness is a traitor. Wow, that's powerful, ain't it? Mm -hmm. they, well, how many false witnesses were it against Jesus? They told them what to say when they couldn't find, when the stone was rolled away. Yeah. Yeah. Tell them grave robbers came yeah. and stole the body. Yeah. They did that. And they did that. Yeah. The they false did. witness. Yeah. Yeah. That's why they even crucified false witness. So we heard him say that. He blasphemed God. Yeah. He needs to die. Yeah. They all had false witness against yeah. Jesus, <laughs> killed him. Guess what? You're gonna have a law if you're if you're walking a godly path. You're going to have a lot of false witnesses. People are going to talk about you. But Jesus said, be joyful. Consider it great joy, because your reward is in heaven. Yeah. Let them talk. Let them chirp. It doesn't matter. You know you're on the right path, and God sees everything. That's right. Amen. Let me tell you, if you try to please God and people, you drive yourself nuts. That's right. I learned one thing over the years I've been here. I ain't here to please people. I'm here to please God. People are going to like it or they're not going to like it. And now you know what? That doesn't offend me at all because it's all God's word. They're either accepting God's word or they're rejecting it. Amen. So I don't, if people come or people go, hey, I love everybody, but guess what? I love Jesus more. And I'm accountable to him because he's the one that I can make an account to when I go to be with him. John, did you compromise? Did you try to please them and make them happy so they'll like you? Nah. No. I ain't going to do that. Especially when sensitive subjects come up in the Bible. I don't dance around the scriptures. I read it right through anyway. Even though I already know. I said, oh boy, this is going to step on some toes. <laughs> Good. Probably step on mine too. Because all this is good medicine right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, that helped. That honey helped me when I had, took a tablespoon of that honey. <laughs> I haven't been coughing. Amen. Lori well, we told me to have a tablespoon of honey before I came. Praise the Lord. Feel better. Praise the Lord. Then have to go to, uh, what's that other stuff? Robitussin. Uh, I think that makes me cough more. <laughs> it costs more. Actually, the honey costs more. Really? Because it's pure honey. Yeah, pure honey is expensive. The real stuff costs more. Yeah, I just have to buy it and so. <laughs> I'm just thinking about that, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Believe me, I had my share of pharmaceuticals. <laughs> <laughs> a true fool, look what it says. Wealth is a crown for the wise. The effort of fools yields only foolishness. A truthful witness saves lives, but a false witness is a traitor. Those who fear the Lord are secure. <laughs> He will be a refuge for their children. Imagine that. Amen. You know, it's funny because I know, you know how parents are always concerned for their kids and what they're doing and everything you have to, but when you're with God, he puts his hedge around the whole family. When you're Amen. walking on a righteous path, if I was living ungodly and sinful and evil, I'd have a lot to fear what's going on out there for my kids and everything else. But when you're doing the right thing because you love your children and your family and you want to walk on the right path, God honors that and protects them. And I have comfort in my heart because I do the best I can to stay on a godly path. I don't just talk about it. I want to live it. Amen. I want this to become part of me. Amen. I want all the blessings now. I don't want to wait to go to heaven. I want it now. So guess what? It takes time to get the blessings. You've got to go through a lot of the testings to get the blessings, but the blessings are internally to be comfortable in your own skin. Amen. 
to be comfortable in your own skin and who you are, the weakness of your flesh, being comfortable, you know, your kids are okay with God. Think of, he's got them. That's a great place to be. Yep. Comfortable with the church, not always troubled and worrying about everybody. <coughs> uh, no. I'm getting there. I'm getting in the promised land, but I'm, I'm working for it. I'm, I'm denying my flesh to get there. There's a goal. I want the promised land here. I want the promised land here. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a goal we should all set? Mm -hmm. I want the promised land. You get up in the morning, even though you feel depressed and heavy. Nope, I ain't accepting it. Move forward. I don't feel like exercising. Nope, I'm going to do it. Because after it's all said and done, you're so glad that you did, mm -hmm. then if you didn't, then, then what? The promised land gets wiped out. You said, ah, I should have did it. I know I should have. There goes the promised land. But when you do things that your flesh tells you not to do, you enter into that place of rest. And you get peace with God. But it's a fight. It's a fight for the what? Flesh and the spirit. We don't give up without a fight on flesh now, do we? But as we mature, though, give yourself a break. As we mature in the Lord, our flesh gets weaker and weaker. And our spirit gets stronger and stronger. We have highs and we have lows. I don't know anybody in the world that doesn't have that. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to what, try to eradicate it by what? Clouding your mind with something. <clears throat> There's no promised land there because you've got to do what? Pop another one the next day to stay there. There's no promised land there. You're depending on something else besides God to get you into that level state of mind. And that soon enough won't work anymore. Then you'll have to take something on top of that. And then you'll have to take something on top of that. And, that, and you know what? Your body shuts down making the stuff that it makes naturally. So now you might have to take it for the rest of your life because you compromised. The, the, the companies don't tell you what the long-term effects of these things are. To be careful that our human body is lazy. When you take it in from the outside, your body shuts down making it. Yeah. So then when you get off it, your body's not making it anymore. Yeah. So now you're feeling all kinds of emotions and everything because your body's all confused. Yeah. It's not making, it's not level anymore. And most people go back and have to do it again and go back on it because they can't level or stabilize anymore because it took over them. I fear the Lord, you know what? I, I don't want none of that. I don't want my mind clouded by anything. I want the Lord dominating my mind, mm -hmm. not the devil. Because if you trace back what pharmaceutical really means, it means pharmakeo, which means witchcraft. That's what it means. You put something into your system that clouds your ability to think properly and to what? It puts you in compromise, and it, and it compromises your moral standards. And I'm all set with that. I know what the Bible says. I'm going to stick with it. A lot of people don't want to touch that subject, but that's the truth. And the truth is what sets us free. And don't worry, God can heal anything. Jesus is the ultimate healer. You know what kills us? You think it's sickness and disease. No, sin is what kills us. It's not the disease and the sickness. Sin causes disease and sickness. Our sin nature is what kills us. People do not understand that our sin nature is what puts you to death. That's why God hates your sin nature wants to give you a new nature so you can have life and have it more abundantly. First it kills you spiritually, then it kills you what? Physically, right? All right, let's finish this off. Fear of the Lord is a life-giving fountain. It offers escape from the snares of death. You see it? A growing population is a king's glory. A prince without subjects has nothing. People with understanding control their anger. Look at 29. A hot temper shows great foolishness. Wow. Anger clouds our judgment. Anger clouds our judgment. 
It's almost like it's it's almost like taking something. That anger starts coming up, like you took some kind of medication. It's like a it's like a drug. It comes up. Mm. And then it comes out, and you can't control it. It takes over you. Whether you want it to or not, it takes over you. It's called possession. I don't like that either. No, look what it says. A peaceful heart leads to a healthy body. Here it is. Look, it says it right here. A peaceful heart leads to a healthy body. Jealousy is like cancer in the bones. These people that are so jealous of everybody, as you know, you want to tell them something good that happened, but you're afraid to because they might get jealous that you accomplished something and they want what you have. You have to be careful. Those who oppress the poor insult their maker, but helping the poor honors him. The wicked are crushed by disaster. But the godly have a refuge when they die. Yes, we do. Amen. <laughs> Wisdom is enshrined in an understanding heart. Wisdom is not found among fools. Godliness makes a nation great. This is beautiful. This, this is what's to be preached out there right now yes. in America. Amen. Godliness makes a nation great. But sin is a disgrace to any people. This country is overrun by sin right now. Sin, it doesn't really matter what God says. In God we trust, that's baloney. This, this country's in for a big... Oh, it's, it's in. It's in for something, you know. It says it right here. Godliness makes a nation great. Godliness is what? It doesn't compromise the moral character of the Bible. It doesn't accept all the stuff that's going on out there. No, it doesn't. No. The Bible is politically incorrect, by the way. That's why. It's going to come a day when we're going to get hated because of our beliefs. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's already happening. Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. But guess what? God's got our backs. You know what? I'm not compromising with that. I'm not accepting all that garbage that the world says it's okay to do. The Bible says it's not, and I'm not going to do it. Amen. And I'm not going to condone it, and I'm not going to say, oh, it's okay. No, 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 no. No, it's not okay. God says it's sin. Mm -hmm. Don't try to turn it what it is. Sin is sin. A king rejoices in wise servants, but is angry with those who disgrace him. Right? Even, even, even in the, over there, if people disgrace them, out they go. Because, because, they, because it's what? The scripture is supposed to honor the leadership. All right, we're going to close right there. Thank you. We're just going to come up and sing. God is good, right?